Hey, this is Karen, Coach's Corner Chats, and on the episode today, I have Keith Cheek. Keith, where are you at, and what are you up to? Thanks for, be, uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, I am finishing up my 10th year uh, coaching my U18 team. Had pretty much the same team together for 10 years. Um, we are completing our seventh year in the Tempest Club. Uh, and I am finishing up my fifth year as president of Tempest FC Indiana. Um, so that's where the club is. And we just got done with a quick fall showcase season and we get a month off here and then we start back up again uh, for the spring. What, what was the impetus to start? Were you always wanting to coach um, soccer? Is this something you've always kind of like had that motivation to do? Uh, never in a million years, uh, <laughs> did I growing up think I would be coaching soccer. Um, my high school did not have a, a team until after I graduated. Uh, I am from Indiana. Uh, and we were a little bit late to the game. Uh, I remember soccer around when I was young, but none over in Indiana where I grew up. I don't even remember seeing kids playing on a field anywhere. Um, and so um, that I was a football player in a, in a really uh, established state known program uh, over here. I went to East Central High School. Um, and so to answer your question a little bit differently, did I wanna be a coach? Absolutely. Um, my father was a coach, uh, a role model of mine for, for many years. I, I had some tremendous uh, football and baseball coaches. Um, and I knew that when my days were over playing uh, that that's something that would, is, I call fill the bucket. Uh, and so I had children um, after many years and, and running all around this country. Um, and one day my, my daughter, uh, my middle child, um, had tried other sports. She was seven, six, seven years old uh, and she picked soccer. Um, we went out to that first practice and there were no coaches. Um, so I raised my hand and uh, 10 years later, it's changed my life, my family's life, my daughter's life. Um, every single aspect and it's the it's the best decision I ever made was to walk on that field what were that first kind of jump into the pool without really knowing how to swim what were when you look back what were some of the things like your biggest learning curve that you look back and go man I, like maybe I that was way off or um, if I could go back and do it differently so a couple of things I learned, uh, my impression of soccer changed within a couple practices, even coaching six and seven year olds, the amount as a football player, you know, you, you come up thinking you, you had the toughest way, you know, and I can tell you what, learning um, about the, the cardio involved, uh, the mental, the what's going on out there again, never watching the sport. I didn't give it the time to, to look at what was unfolding out there uh, and the strategy behind the game. Um, and so learned right away, wow, this is an amazing sport. It's very, again, very high level. I always compared it to hockey right away. Uh, I was a hockey fan and I see a lot of the similarities. Um, so luckily enough, um, and ties this whole story together, I, I look over that first practice and I see a kid that I went to high school with. Hadn't seen him in 10, 10 12 years. Uh, and I go over to talk to him. This is great because it changed a lot of stuff and made our team really what it is today. Um, I start talking to him, finds out the guy was the head coach at Larsburg High School for 10 years, the girls team. Uh, and he retired when he had his daughter, who was the same age as mine. And I said, look, dude, you're coaching, whether you like it or not. So that's <laughs> the best move I made. <laughs> The guy is amazing. His name's Chris Hopper. Uh, the guy has played college. Uh, the guy's a legend, and he's one of the best trainers uh, that, that I've ever been around. But um, it was just, you know, jump in the fire. Uh, at that age, as you know, uh, you're, you're corralling. Uh, you know, I had 11 little girls uh, that, that I fell in love with, and um, I wanted them to have a good time. And, and I think early on, Chris and I, with, with that lack of a of knowledge of soccer on my side, we kind of split and I, I put a focus in on those players and what they needed. And, and Chris was able to focus on the skill and where he wanted to take the team. Uh, and I think it was a rare combination that allowed this team to stay together for, for 10 years and have the success that it did. It sounds like you've had from the experiences with like, you were talking about your dad being a coach and kind of like that impetus 
and then having someone like him come in as well, just, and it happened to see him. Uh, how beneficial was it to have those kind of role models or guys to lean on? Um, it's, it's why I'm here today. If I look back at what I taught, my father taught me, um, you know, I, no better way to say it than, you know, you're not special on that field. It, it really established, my father and I had a great relationship, but it really established when you go out there, how you, when you go out in the world, that you're on your own and your merit is what's going to get you um, noticed um, and, and get you recognition and get you what you want. Um, so he really established that, fully supportive, um, gave me confidence when I was young. Uh, rolled into my next coach in high school, who was a legendary football coach in the Indiana Hall of Fame. Uh, and he taught me to be tough. He taught me to be a man uh, on that football field. There was so much more going on that he was teaching me that when I hit the age of 19, 20, I was like, oh my gosh, this is everything that that, that man was teaching me on the football field. Um, and then, you know, again, being around some, some of the greats locally that, that you know, you know, Coach Hopper first, but then meeting Joe Talley. Uh, very early in my career. The guy, I mean, he, he's done so much for me personally and for my team. He's the one that got me into Tempest. Uh, and then Sean Pence, who you, you know as well, who Tempest was his idea. Uh, we got together and he's my best friend now. And our brains just connected. Again, not even growing up in that same world. He, he grew up playing soccer. Um, he saw the love that I had for the players and wanting to get them to be great. Um, whether that be in life or on the soccer field. Um, and so I was always, you know, those those coaches that you see that want to do all of that, or they want to do things so much their way. I, I think the smartest thing I ever did, because I didn't know the sport, was being so open when I first started. You know, what, what can I learn? What can I steal from other coaches? Um, you know, I was just this great sponge. And when I saw somebody that was, that was, had a, had a talent or had something, you know, I wanted them to be a part of this club. I wanted the, our girls to experience those, those different aspects. So again, I, I've talked to a lot of people who have had bad coaching experiences and I've been on other podcasts. I didn't have it, you know, and, and um, you know, we talk about how sports can save troubled kids. I was not a troubled kid and it has had a huge impact uh, on my entire life. So I, I wanted to replicate that when I got older. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so you just brought up Sean Pence and kind of the move to Tempest. So at what point did you, with this younger group of girls coming up, did you say, we might have something special here and I need to kind of transition from like a rec setting to more of a competitive opportunity? Well, actually, this will get interesting here. Uh, this is when what I call the Indiana issue uh, came in. So mm -hmm. we joined Cincinnati West, uh, was our first one to get into big clubs in this area. Uh, and they, they were great. You know, there was a great opportunity. I was able to bring my entire team in, um, which is not always allowed in all the clubs, but I was, um, I was able to do that. Um, but, but right away, Kieran, I, I saw a big issue in Indiana. So I don't know if you know the layout, but over here in Indiana, you know, we have a bunch of little cities over here and you're very close to the border. Um, so you're going to play with these Ohio clubs. And I saw a problem in our high schools that these great players were going off and playing in all these Ohio clubs. And then they were coming back together as freshmen with, with no acknowledgement of each other, no experience, no playing. And, and again, growing up in that football world, I thought soccer was crazy when I started because of all the movement and the breaking up of teams and changing coaches. Yeah. I always tell people, if you did that in peewee football, somebody would show up at your house. You know, a dad would show up and say, you're not switching my boy. Um, so I, I just, that, that threw me off right away because, you know, as you get in the big club, they start talking about, hey, we might move some of these players to this team. And, and, and I was like, whoa, whoa, I, I want to do something different here. Um, but again, I saw a deficiency in Indiana high school soccer players. Um, and so I was looking for, a different type of club. And again, that, I'm not putting down any of those big clubs. That's their model. But I was saying to myself, is there another way? Um, is there a different way? And could that way benefit Indiana soccer as well um, if we make some changes? Um, 
So funny enough, Joe Talley, who was training my team at the time, that's why my team got so good. Joe Talley was training them when they were about <laughs> seven and eight years old. We had Joe Talley. Um, love that man. Um, and so we were one wanting something more. Uh, we were now a couple years into the select world and, and seeing what's out there. Coach Hopper, even though he'd coached high school, this select world is, is crazy. You know what I mean? It is, it is a whole nother universe. Um, and so as we were kind of checking that, Joe Talley came up to me and just said, hey, there's somebody I really want you to talk to. He, he talks like you, his vision of what he wants to do. Um, and so I connected with, with Coach Pence. He came out, watched us play. Um, and uh, he had maybe two teams at the time in Tempest. He had, he had saw a problem as well up there with those big clubs and said, I'm going to do something different as well. Um, and so we, we talked for 10 minutes and was like, this is amazing how we both feel about this. Um, and, you know, maybe we'll, we'll, we will get into that. So I don't want to tell you about what, what was unique about Tempus now, but that's the change. When, when I saw a new way and somebody that I, I didn't want power, I wanted to be listened to. And again, keep pushing that meter. It, is this the best we can do? Or is there more that we can do? Um, that, that's what got us in the Tempest. And again, what it changed with my team, and I'll tell you why, um, what it changed with my team mentally to go to Tempest, uh, and, and what we have built, uh, it was, it was an amazing decision, uh, seven years ago. So again, one of the good early decisions that I made. The, the unique thing, the thing that I love is one, you talk about that willingness to learn, like even back then when you first came in. Um, and you've every time had that opportunity to grab. And then the other thing that I love about this is you're clearly doing everything you can to help these girls. Like it wasn't like, oh, I want to create the best team. And if it's girls from Ohio, Indiana, whatever, if they come up from Kentucky, et cetera, you were like, no, I want to make this area of Indiana a soccer hotbed. And if yes. I can create it, um, and more girls come in, that's awesome. If not, I'll continue to build these ones up. So I think that's really cool. And it sounds like Coach Pence um, had the same kind of kind of idea of like, look, I just want to create an opportunity where we let more girls get the opportunity to play. Right. I, I, you just stated it exactly right. Uh, and, and again, what was our focus? Was it to have a team at every age group that competed in a certain league? No, it was let's build these teams and we'll get in a little bit more detail what our club philosophy is. Cause we don't build players, we build teams. And that's what these great players come out of. Um, we wanted to build great teams, give them an opportunity in high school. And for those that want it, we have a huge focus on recruiting and getting those girls to the next level. I kind of run that area for Tempest as well. Um, so again, we, we wanted a different focus and we wanted to look at these things that weren't perfect and say, is there? We, we weren't sure if any of this was going to work, but we wanted to try something new. What have been some of the um, like struggles that you've gone through over those 10 years? Because uh, I'm sure it hasn't all been uh, perfect. Like, What are some of the things that you have kind of run into do, going maybe in this direction? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and there has been. So one is we were where my club is positioned. If you look at us on a map, uh, we are surrounded by the two largest clubs on well-established, well-run, well-trained mm -hmm. clubs that have been doing it for 20 years around here. Um, and that's, I mean, way over in Indiana. They, they, Indiana soccer controls none of Southeast Indiana at, at all until we came along. I don't even think there was a team registered in Indiana within 30 <laughs> miles. It, it was, that, and I'm like, wow, this is crazy. But again, a tremendous soccer hotbed in Cincinnati. So early on, our struggle was how do we position those teams? We have these phenomenal leagues in Cincinnati we want to be a part of because it's right here. We don't want to go up in Indianapolis. Um, but we also wanted to, something that had never happened in this part of the state, we wanted to go to our own home state and start competing there. Again, my team that I built from scratch, we wanted to go fight for President's Cups. We wanted to fight for state cups. Um, we wanted to go to the Great Lakes Conference and the National League. 
Um, we didn't know how we were going to get there, but that's what we wanted to do. So back to your question, we had to establish credibility for two or three years. Um, it was always so easy for players, if they were making a decision between the two clubs to say, oh, well, this club, you know, has done that, or this club has done that, and that team has done that. Uh, and, and again, between you and I, you know, these were nine and 10 year olds. And I, and as I look back now, I'm like, I lost some players because they wanted to play in Buckeye two and we were in Buckeye three back then. You know what I mean? And, and, and you, you look back and go, parent, don't worry about that. Find a great coach, find a great experience. You know, the rest of that will come on its own and it'll come quick. Uh, and, 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 but find that great experience, um, build that network for your child, whether it is coaches, trainers, or their players. Um, and so that, that was difficult. My, my team specifically, I, I was able to, I, I can see that. So I was able to recruit a different way. But as we started adding teams, we went from two teams to 18 teams in, in like two years. Um, so again, there was a need in Indiana. And as soon as we exposed people to it, it just blew up. Um, but I, I think it, it was hard to, again, credibility, having a, some kind of track record. Um, and, you know, and again, we were half the costs of a lot of these clubs. That didn't matter. That, and I was like, whoa, you know, again, these parents, this isn't about money. This is about, you know, there was, it's about what your neighbors are saying and who your neighbors play for. And, you know, again, I, I go back to it, but our, our, my daughter was walking around our schools over here in Indiana and all she saw was the two big clubs, you know what I mean? And, and so I and the rest of us really had, we had to brand ourselves. We had to get credibility. We had to watch every corner that we did. We had to establish results. Uh, and, and then now the floodgates have opened uh, for us. But man, it's hard. And I know Mercury's uh, going through it right now. And I, I talk to them all the time. I love it. Um, but it's hard to establish. This market is one of the best in the country. Uh, and you know that uh, all these college coaches I talk to, you know, they say California, Texas, and Cincinnati. Um, and um, so, man, to come into one of the hottest markets with some of the greatest players, trainers, leagues, clubs available, um, we had to really stay, keep our eye on the prize and, and keep putting those results, um, putting those results down. So, uh, and you don't want to always track with that, but we had to because that's what we were dealing with the first two, three, four years. You brought up um, the kind of the idea of parents. What have the parents been in terms of making this move to a, you know, at that point, like this is the only soccer experience in Indi this part of Indiana, and now it's grown up to 18. What have the parents been like in terms of their buildup and kind of the growth of the club and, and the success of your team? So my parents were, again, this is seven years ago. My parents were skeptical because they were, this was going into a club that they had never even heard of mm. when, you know, again, there were two Tempest teams. It was in Ohio. I had never heard of them until Joe told me their name. Um, and so mine, but, but again, I'd had mine. I, I, I kid you not when I say I got half these players out of stay uh, and then pulled them and, and they've been with me now for 10 years, a lot of players on my team. So there was trust. And at the end of the day, they said, coach, if you and coach Hopper think that's the right decision, um, you know, that, that's what we're going to do. Since then, we have this new generation that is coming up now. And here's where the change happened. You know, you get exposed when you're five, six and seven, you hear about those other clubs and you start thinking about soccer when your kids get into it. Well, if you cross that border now, Tempest is just saturated over here. It's in all the schools where we win every high school award. We've had the last two MVPs in the conference over here. We are, we are all over now where we have parents wanting, you know, coming. I want my daughter in your club. I don't care who she plays for. Um, I want her in your club. Because what we haven't got into yet, and I want you to ask me, is, you know, the first eight years, this was an all-girls club. All girls. And Tempest actually still is, but we've created a boys version called evolution um, two years ago. Hmm. Um, but we really sold over here um, the values of our club, which again is this girl focused power, nutrition, 
uh, physical, how, how we train them. We, we wanted to put a focus on the female athlete because we thought they're very unique. Um, and we thought that that was an area where that was not being addressed. You know, again, as, as I got older and we started, you know, getting ready um, for the girls to kind of hit the middle school years. And I was reading all these articles on things we could do to make sure that we're working their muscles as they change and they go through that evolution. We were planning for that and we changed our training around it. Um, and the way we supported them mentally during that time and, and what, again, our model of you become part of a team here and we build that team. Um, it, what I've seen after 10 years it, it, and, and feedback from parents is it's really allowed these girls um, to go through these tough stages in life with an ally, with somebody on their back, with 15 girls uh, on their back to support them with, you know, two, three additional coaches um, able to help them through every, I've been through every challenge as I'm sure you have. Um, and the way we built this club, uh, I kind of feel like if you were in a lot of the bigger clubs you, where you have, you know, four or five people really well, and you know, some of the parents and, you know, the coaches are often paid and they're younger. And I, I don't know if that's set up for when these girls, again, really need us. And, and I'm not even talking about soccer here. And I think you know that they, they need us. Um, I've done the math, you know, a, a coach is number three behind parents and their teacher on who they'll spend the most time with in their life between zero and 18. And so that's a big focus we put on. And, and that's why this club has been able to grow in Indiana because we really let people know about that. I think you've seen these, some of the girl uh, high school football kickers we've had over here. We've had girls in sports illustrated. Um, you know, we, we play that up and, and parents really want their children to be a part of something like that. I'm not just going to teach them soccer. I'm going to get them ready for life. And, and we've, We've done that now. We have a track record to go on. Um, one of the things, and I was going to bring that up too, is I've loved the fact that your girls um, have taken, like stepped outside of the field and like to go out and kick field goals and do it successfully, like at a really well, uh, high level um, speaks volumes that they are kind of like how you talk about. There's a tenacious and a, a, a just a, a kind of a, just a go, go, go type of attitude. The other thing I wanted to ask about was um, coaching your daughter. What's that experience been, um, you know, from the early days to now, what has, what has been like some of the great things about it? And what are some of the, is it hard to turn coach off when you get in the car or what's that dynamic been for you? I would say it's hard to turn player off when I get in the car. <laughs> She's 16 now. So we've uh, that, you know, we've, um, I got to tell you, I'll never be able to explain to her, and I won't get, I promise I won't get to your, <laughs> I'll never be able to explain what I got out of it with her, to have that experience, um, and I have two other children that I spend a lot of time with, and, but for her and I to have this, this sports competitive the things you understand, the work that you have to do, the conversations her and I have had. Um, I Again, I would not trade it for the world. I, I hope my dad felt the way that I feel about my daughter, the way he felt about being able to coach me. Um, because of that experience, I was very tough on her from the beginning. And again, tough's a rough word. I, she, she knew she was equal to everybody else out there. Um, and I established that when she was extremely young, when she did push that envelope a little bit. Um, by the time she was nine or 10, you know, that, that went away. Um, even, and it was important for me, having a long-term plan with this team, I wanted my girls to see that as well. We have three coaches on my team and all three of us have daughters on the team. Oh, wow. And I've seen that in other sports and football and whatnot. And that can get very you know, bad. Um, they will all tell you if, if, if you ask one of them, how much does coach Keith, you know, yell at his daughter compared to everybody else? And they would say more, you know what I mean? So <laughs> it, it's not more, but 
it's okay that that's how they view it because it's certainly not less. Um, I've held her to the same standard as everybody else. Um, and she has to earn the same things that everybody else does. And I think all three of us have done that. Another thing that we did here on that I think was smart and we didn't even do it on purpose. When they were young, we all took each other's daughters when there was a problem on the soccer field. So if my daughter had something going on or whatnot during a game, an injury, where when if daddy gets there, it gets twice as bad. Yes. We had another coach take, take it and they would stay, fo- you know, and then I would take one of theirs and we just kind of automatically did it and we still do it today. Their daughters will come to me. And mm-hmm. um, so we were smart. Um, we talked about it. We talked about all these things because we were so into it. How do we make sure that parents don't think this and how do they, you know, we're, we were all in. And, and, and again, it shows you there's no way all these coaches out here can do that. It takes your whole your whole life to be this consumed in it. And again, it's not their fault. It's just if you're coaching five teams, you cannot have the relationships that a team like ours with three coaches for 10 years can develop with these players. Um, so it's been great. Uh, there are those battles, like I said, turn off the player um, as she got a little bit older uh, and turned into her mother. Her mother's watching <laughs> this back to that. Um, but she's what I raised her to be. I wanted her to be tough. I wanted her to be, to question things. I wanted, so what I built is coming back on me, but we're very good about it. And we, we put it in perspective and I, I still do the old saying it's been 10 years now. She's a sophomore. When she gets in the car, I tell her that I love watching her play. That That's the first thing I still say to her to this day. We've played 400, over 400 games together. I still say, love to watch you play. If she don't want to talk about it, we don't talk about it. So some pretty simple things can, can make those unique situations a lot easier. Uh, and again, I was open. I was open to that, to doing it the right way early. The one thing I love too is that the three of you as males already knew from your experience with females knew that we can't just kind of wing it. We have to have a plan in place. So if something goes down, like you said, which is a great point of the, you know, if she gets, goes down, I can't go out there because it's going to become a big, like you can go out or if she's having the issue, let her talk to you, which I think is a great idea. And I did the same thing when I taught my daughter, my assistant, I was like, look, man, if I need something said to her or whatever, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you right. to tell her, cause it'll be, it'll be heard um, a little bit better now that they're, now that they're in high school. So you brought them up, you've built them into higher levels in terms of in the select world, um, you know, state cups and et cetera. Now they're in high school. What's the, what's the push now for this group as they go into this next upcoming spring and the next couple um, going forward? It's been amazing. uh, And it started the last month or so. So majority of my team are juniors. And then I have, Half of my team is sophomores. So when the remember when the old age up happened about six or seven years ago, yes, we decided not to do it. We <laughs> and that again, we that's what Tempest was awesome about. Where this whole team would have reaged if we were in a bigger club and had to break. Um, Tempest is like, look, if you can if you can do it, you know, you, you're you're in control of yourself. And we do that actually with a lot of our coaches in Tempest um, because you you know what players. Um, are so um so you know juniors now and seniors uh we've been hitting the college circuit i don't know if you remember but we had the seventh grader that committed two years ago to indiana okay Were you I, uh, it was right before the rule changed so that's why so that got me i want to bring that up because that's what exposed me to creating relationships with college coaches and how how much of an impact that could have for my club uh, moving forward. So, um, so anyway, we've been hitting the, the showcase circuit the last couple seasons. Um, we hit it hard, um, you know, in, in November here. Um, and now we have, you know, I would say out of my 17 players, this is not an exaggeration. 14 of them will move on, I believe, and play uh, at the next level. Um, and so we're really focused the next couple months on getting them out to ID camps. ID camps are huge. Um, and this is me 
again, talking to 100 D1 coaches now, the Indiana coach, good friend of mine, LSU coach, good friend of mine. Uh, we talk all the time now. And so I'm to the point where I'm like, how do you want somebody to get in front of you? What things do you look for? Um, what do you want to know? If a player's tied, what are the intangibles? What are those extra things you look for? Um, and so, you know, we really are focused on you pick out a couple things. Let me back up because this is important. <laughs> when they come to me and they say, coach, I want to go to, co I want to play in college. First thing I say to them is how are your grades and how are your friends? Okay. You got an issue in either one of those. We're not going to talk about that. We're going to, we're going to fix that because you need all that. You need to be socially well. You need to be academically well before we talk about it. The next thing I say to them is, what do you want to do? And they'll ask, and they'll ask me why I asked that question. I say, here's, let me ask, here's why I asked that question. I want to get you to a school that if you break your leg the first day that you're there, you stay at that school and you get your education. So I've kind of, created a, a, a program here that I roll out to everybody. I have the third oldest team in Tempest, um, and then the rest are all younger than us. Um, but we break out based on, we have a discussion on where we think they can go, D1, D2, D3. Um, all of them are amazing, great opportunities. Then we create a target of schools of, that have programs that we're interested in. Um, whatever you want to be, I want to see that program there. I want you, when you talk to those coaches, to ask about those programs. The coaches want you to ask about a program and know what you're going to do. Um, so once we do that, I say get to ID camps. The a coach is never really going to go to a high school game that much. They're going to pop in every once in a while, but they told me they don't like them because they don't know the competition. They don't know what's going on. Yeah. Um, they're going to get out and potentially see you. Uh, you know, we play in, in the National League and we play in really high level college showcases. So you're going to get to see them there. But other than that, you need to create the relationship and you need to put yourself in front of them. Um, and so back to answer your question, we're really focused. I, I do email templates and I send it out to all my girls, um, you know, a week before we'll play in a showcase. We hit up all the coaches. I give them a list. We hit up, they hit up the coaches they're interested in, game times, what they're playing, what their grades are. Uh, we hit them up the day before we play. We hit them up the next week. So I have a cadence for all of this. Uh, and again, now I want them at ID camps. Uh, and I had two phone calls today because I had a girl go to the Louisville one this weekend and two or three schools are interested in her. Um, nothing's going to come easy. It, it's, it's like... It's like our results on the field. You know, you, you got to put in work to even, you know, we, we don't tell our girls they have to win. We tell our girls you have to put in a certain amount of work to, to give yourself an opportunity to win. Um, and, and that's what we're looking for. We're, we're, we're looking for opportunities. Um, so great dialogue. Uh, don't have your parents. Don't have your parents contact college coaches. Anybody who reads it. <laughs> They hate it. They hate it. They forward me emails from other parents and say, look what this guy just sent me. This is why you don't, you know, um, these girls are, are, are older. And as we're learning stuff today, when they hit probably eighth grade year, freshman year, I went to them and the parents and I said, look, we now, me and the players are going to handle everything. I'm not coming to you parents anymore. You're not coming to me anymore. They are adults. They're going to be treated by their high school coach this way. They're going to be treated by their college coach this way. So we are going to dialogue. You miss practice. Your daughter is texting Coach Keith. She is going to deal with that and having to make that, that statement. Um, and so we did that and we, we used that and we've carried it on now and said, that's why we did it. You're prepared now to talk to these people. And we're, we're getting tremendous results to the point where I have colleges coming in and getting multiple players out of my club because they're like, these girls are mature, they're educated in this game and they have a specific style that we like um, a play. So when I heard all those things, I said, we're doing it right. We just gotta make sure we're, we're exposing these girls the right way to these coaches and, and good opportunities. Is there a point where this team will age out of the club and if or when that happens, what what does Coach Keith do now? 
It wakes me up at night thinking about that day. I can tell you that. I'm not kidding. It wakes me up at night because I've told you how much this team has, has changed and this club has yeah. changed my life. Um, we will age out next year. So we'll play this spring. Okay. Uh, and then we'll play the following fall and spring. Um, and then I'll have a handful of O fives that we don't know, but my team, the Shockers, um, that team will be done after that season. Um, we have some amazing young teams uh, that, that I've helped build and that I've been a part of. I'm really, uh, it's really important to me as we went to 18 teams to be around all these teams. I can probably tell you most girls' names in this club. Um, and, and that's what I like. I like when I come out to practice. I think you're this way. I like when 12 little munchkins come up and give me a big hug. Um, and so I'm staying in this club. Uh, I'll probably take a team or two. I can't imagine it because of how much, again, I've loved this team and, and, and everything that I put into it. Um, but I, 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 I think I'll go back. I don't think I'll start from scratch. Um, I can't imagine that world starting <laughs> over. Maybe I will. I, I, don't, I don't know, but uh, I, I'll stay in the club and I'll, I'll, I'll stay focused on this recruiting. I love doing this recruiting for any of the teams. So I, I know I'll bring that program. We have a bunch of 06, 07, 09 teams. Um, so I'm going to prepare them. And, and I'd love to coach a team or two. There's word that me and Coach Pence may finally come together and actually coach a team together. Oh. Um, which I would love. I would, him and I would, we talk daily, but I would love to be on the sideline with him. So uh, th I'm in this for life. I can tell you that I'm in this for life and I'm with this club for life. Um, I just don't know what it is yet. And it scares me. It scares me to think about it because of this love I have with my team, which, you know, again, I, I know I, I'm just worried when it's over because I know it's the experience has been so phenomenal. So you mentioned earlier, um, your wife, what has your wife been in terms of support and kind of watching this growth and, and supporting you as a coach? And clearly, like you said, when you invest into a group or into a club like you have, it's not a, uh, a small time commitment. It's a lot of effort, it's a lot of passion, energy, travel. Like I know in the league you're in, you're traveling all over the place um, for games. What has she been in terms of being that kind of support that has held up the house and all the other little things and et cetera. Held up the house. That's a good way to say it. She's already <laughs> whispering. Make sure you say, um, so a couple things make this all work. It, if she wasn't all in, I, and I've seen it, you know, with some of the other coaches and, and things that I've been around, um, like you say, with the travel and as crazy as I got into this thing, um, there, there's no way. A uh, couple things helped. One is we grew up together. So she knew me as the crazy football player. Uh, she didn't like me then, uh, but she knew me and she knew how I was. And I, I'm loud. I'm in it. I'm, I'm, I'm all day. The second thing is she's actually the dance coach at East Central High School, um, where all of my kids go. So she's a coach as well. A lot of times you don't have that dynamic, you know, two coaches, um, but they go year round. They're state, they're multi-state champions. They've been national champions and uh, just like soccer, I used to laugh at dance, laugh at it. Dude, these girls go five nights a week. They, the physical toll they put on their body. So utmost respect now for that. Um, she was all into, um, and it's hard not to be with the, the team that we had and whatnot. I mean, she helps me recruit. She, I mean, she'll come home from school and say, I saw this girl super fast <laughs> running across the playground. Um, I asked her who she was and, you know, she's going to come to tryouts or whatnot. Um, so she's all in, she loves it. Uh, sometimes probably gives me too much advice. Sometimes I'll be like, yo, I've been doing this for 10 years. You know, you might want to do this. Um, cause I don't get dancing advice, even though I'm an excellent dancer. Yep. Um, but it, it's, it's work because of that. So what I always told people was, you know, I'm gone a lot. She's gone a lot. If you don't understand that world being a coach, I think it can cause lots of problems, but we knew what each one of us is doing. So she knows if I'm gone for three days straight doing all this, man, there's probably 60 kids that got some benefit out of that, including our daughter and, 
and, and all that. And, and she's the same way. She'll go when they get close to a competition, I won't see her for a week, but I, I know what they're doing and I know the value of it. So we never penalized each other for what we gave up because we know how important it is to our community, to kids, uh, I, between both of us, not, and it's, you've done it too. Man, we've saved 20, 30 kids' lives, dude. I, I, and I, I mean, you know, that are older now or we did things, with, even if they're not with us, you can see the impact when you coach. Uh, and that's what's so great about it. And I wish more people did. Um, it just rewards you with the, the, the people you get to be around and what you can see them do. So, and she does it on, on, the, on the dance side. And so, again, if I didn't have that, there's no way I could have went all in and we are where we would we, be today. Um, so that's a great question. Um, they don't get enough credit. Um, but it was another unique, crazy situation that made this whole crazy thing work. The other thing you talked about um, mentioned was the success that your players have had at the local high schools. What is the relationship between you and those high schools? Because it seems like you're making great connections at the college level. Is there a similar relationship between you and the high schools? Um, like, is there a give and take with some of the local coaches? Um, you know, all those types of things. What kind of success and relationship positives are you having there? That is great, great question. Um, I tackled it like I did the, the college process. <laughs> um, I wanted to establish relationships with these coaches. Um, but it's funny because though, and I'll jump back into it in a second, all these coaches, and one of them coaches my daughter. My daughter plays for East Central. Um, they'll probably tell you that I talk to him less about soccer during the season than most of his parents. And I'm the one that, that is the coach. Um, Cause I know what he's doing. I, I can see all these things. I don't have to ask questions. Um, and so wanted to create, you know, we have three really big high schools close out here, South Dearborn, Lawrence, central um, wanted to create relationships, actually, Two Tempest coaches now at South Dearborn High School, the boys coach and the girls coach are Tempest coaches. Oh. Um, so that you want to know our impact? <laughs> there you go. Um, so, you know, those three schools uh, created those relationships. Um, and again, over here, there was an impression, a, a right impression, you know, that the, the TFA and the CW kids, when they came in, were, were the the good players, because again, they had been trained. They were select players. So to see Tempest come into East Central, which was heavy, you know, these big clubs, and now us have 14 players at East Central from all different teams, um, multiple at Lawrenceburg and South Dearborn. And again, we've won the last two conference MVPs uh, have been Tempest players. Um, so not only are our players becoming a larger portion of each high school team, but we're, we're showing the results too. I mean, when you see all conference and 70% of them are Tempest players, you know, if you're a parent, you're like, what are they doing? They, they are preparing these players. And again, I'd love to say it was all soccer wise. We prepare them up here. We talk about different coaches. I, I even went to the, to the extent of right before they hit freshman year, we talked to the girls about, again, what your coach might be a yeller. Your coach may not communicate. Your coach may. So I would change the way I coach during practice. One practice, I would just yell at them the entire time for no reason. My point was, that may be your reality next year. And if you love soccer, you're going to have to find a way to make that work and get the message mm -hmm. to, to, to have success there. Um, and so... All the coaches are great around here. I just, we haven't ran into that coach yet. But um, again, we prepare them mentally for working with other players and, and how to position themselves, what their eyes should be doing. Um, those details, you know, a lot of people are just kicked into that. And, and, and it's a tough world. And especially with, with females, again, to throw them into that kind of competitive environment, uh, if you haven't prepared them, you could shut them out. And they may be, you know, I don't want to do this or, you know, and it was just a couple of days of, of, you know, a new coach or a new way of doing things. So um, 
these kids are so smart. If we just talk to them and we give them a little bit of planning, um, you know, they can get through these tough things. And so it's just a priority for us um, from a high school perspective. You know, that's stage two. Stage one is building a team. Stage two is high school. Stage three is college. Um, so we want to have a plan and we want things in those stages to relate to each other, as I talked about the way we communicate with them, um, for that to be, oh, I've done this before. I know how to communicate with a coach um, and, and still listen to that coach. Um, and so it, it's been a priority for us. Um, and we've seen tremendous Again, where we are in, in three years from a high school, we, we've totally changed it. We've flipped it over here. Um, and it, it's been amazing to see all three high schools. I, and I want them all to be successful. It's not about my daughter's school or I even went to the same school that she went to. And so did my wife. Um, I, I want to see them all win. I want to see them all out on the field. That's when I'm happy when there's girls on both high school teams from my club. I'm a happy guy. The one thing that I've heard is kind of the idea of having a plan. So clearly you've talked about recruiting, like here, here's how we're going to send emails. Here's how we're going to contact coaches. Here's how we're going to re-contact after um, an ID camp or after a showcase. Um, have you always been like hyper-focused and like super, like here's how I'm going to get the job done? Because um, clearly I can tell just from the way you talk about this, there's the passions there, you're energetic. I can tell you're like, just like we're business, 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 business. Um, has this been something that because you've gotten into coaching, you've kind of like figured out like, you know, from talking like, hey, with our coaches, we got to have a plan when we're dealing with the girls. Um, or even when you first took over, you're like, hey, this guy is a player that has experience and Coach Hopper, I need him to be helping me. Have you always been kind of a, a, a guy that's had a plan or is this something that you've had to kind of morph and become and have in place to have success, not just with your team, but that plan of how you go from two to 18 to go from just a girls club to adding boys, um, that transition to high school to college, like where did all of this kind of come from? So I would never in front of my wife call myself hyper focused. Um, I am the big picture. I'm in sales in my real world too. In my real life, if you can't tell, um, my gift from God was my mouth. Uh, I can blab. Um, so great. And you actually already answered the question. When I got with Coach Hopper, we were he would send me an email before every say practice wow. breaking the whole thing out and he did it for till they were probably u12 and i love it now because i have coaches come to me all the time hey we're going to u11 this year you know and i'm like i have your entire season here you go you know here's every <laughs> um so with that being such a big part of things um, early on when I didn't know anything and I had to rely on those things. So I'm giving all the credit here to Coach Hopper of how we lay these things out. Now, what I do is I have all of them on my radar and bring them in and bring the right people. And, and then here's how we're going to done and who's going to get it done. And I take responsibility to those things as well. Um, but I'm not somebody that's, that's going to be down there you know, hey, if we got these 10 things to do, I'm not going to follow up. I, I really have a lot of trust that if we got 10 things to do, I'm going to get two more people to help me. We're going to break this up in a smart way and we're going to get this done. Um, that's what that's what I'm good at because um, I want to get to the end. So I'm always focused on that and how to pull us through to, to that area. But hyper focus, no. But uh, <laughs> Coach Hopper, again, he trained my brain a whole different way. Um, and we think about everything that way now because of that. So this has been so this has been so cool to kind of see where your little picking up a little say group has now immersed into uh, a team of really, really talented girls and then talented coaches now that you're there's you know going out to local high schools and now the girls are making an impact. Um, if people want to connect with you and kind of like, hey, I'm I love what you've been talking about. Could we, we're in a similar kind of setup where there's not a whole lot of options soccer wise. Right. We want to get something started or they have questions about anything college wise or anything. Uh, what are some easy ways for people to kind of connect with you and follow your, your, your continued journey? 
Absolutely. And again, I'll talk to anybody, anybody <laughs> about call. Like, I, again, I love it. I could meet a stranger tonight and they say, this is my daughter. She's been a goalie for seven years. And after a small conversation, I'm going to obsessively work to get that girl. A, like, again, it means that much to me. I carry it internally. I feel like I'm failing them. And, and you just, everybody's not that way. And, and nobody made me that way. That's how much I want these girls. I will not breathe until, um, you know, they, they, get, they get that success. Um, so what was your question? <laughs> if people want to contact you. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. yeah no, that's all right. You got me. Um, <laughs> otherwise, we have the Tempest FC site, uh, Tempest FC Youth Soccer. You can research on that. Uh, we have a Facebook page. Um, and if you want to add it on here, I would add my phone, my phone number and my email address if you want to attach it. Um, they're all on those pages. You can find me on the Tempest Web FC site and the Facebook page. Or find me on Facebook, Keith Cheek. Um, message me, tell me you love soccer and you want to talk about stuff and, and we can get going uh, there as well. So i um, happy to help any player, any team, any coach, any club make this a great experience for kids. Uh, it's, it's such an impact on their lives, such an impact. Uh, Keith, I've absolutely loved this. I will connect, I have all this stuff in the, in the notes when I send it out for people to, to reach out to you, but I really appreciate you taking the time to chat and share your passion and then a little bit of the, the history and, and story of uh, Tempest FC. I love what you're doing. Keep it up. We need to get these messages out there. We need to get crazy people like me out there. Because <laughs> um, again, we're good. We're good for kids. Uh, but you'd never see us flying by if you were out in the real world. So uh, I love getting in detail. And again, I, I follow and, and listen to all your podcasts. Uh, and, and what I like about them is you get into the people and you find out why they're there and what drives them. And um, that's what makes a great coach. That's what great, a great story behind somebody can make them be a great coach. Uh, so I appreciate you and keep it up. Right on. Uh, that's a perfect way to end. This is Karen with Coach's Corner Chats with Keith Cheek, and I'm out. Peace. Thanks.